Hello everyone, this is Lolly. I'm so glad you're back with me today. Now, many of you know, if you've been with me for a while, that I love working with Craft Text. Craft Text is an infused paper that is sewable, it's washable, you can paint on it, you can, you know, obviously glue, you can die cut. It is really a cool product. And I was on the design team for them uh, one year recently as well. So I have all the really fun colors. But just think of all the things that you could do with this amazing product. And the colors just keep coming. There's so many colors. I've also, I have stamped on this. I have embossed on it. I have done all sorts of crafty goodness with this. But what if we could like get beautiful images on it, like on this cute little notebook I made here. This is an Eileen Hull die that I, it's not available anymore. Um, and this is a bookmark. This is, I believe the stone. This is a bookmark. The, the good thing about this, one of the great things about Craft Ticks is its durability. Hear that? So it's supposed to be not even terrible. Now I have been able to really work hard and tear it in the past, but because of its durability, think about that for something that's going to might be getting some of the abuse that you wouldn't you wouldn't want with cardstock. You want a really durable um, bookmark like this. Well, then use craft text. But what about getting images on there? Look at this bow. Isn't that gorgeous? This is craft text. Now there are two types of craft text. There is this smooth, which is unwashed, and there is this kind of a wrinkly look, which is pre-washed. So I have done this, and this is using transfer sheets. This is the die. I had a small transfer sheet die cut the bow, glued it together, and that's what you get. Again, why would you use something this strong? Well, if you're using it on a journal cover, anywhere where it's going to get a lot of wear and tear, the Craft Text is the perfect solution for this. I need to put a, like a band around this to hold it down. So I want to show you what I've been playing with. It's all been an experiment. So these are transfer me sheets from Dress My Craft. This one, particular one is called Newspaper Washi Tape. They've been around for years. I know my mother liked these when, uh, in the 60s, and they were called water slide decals. And so if you've ever been familiar with water slides, I got to demo them at Creativation for Dress My Craft. Had a blast. You can use these on cardstock, but you know, you don't want to use too much water that way. So I would use like watercolor paper. You can use it on cork, on fabric. You can use it on metal, plastic, glass. Um, I have another project I want to show you. Here's one of those glass calend uh, cylinder candle holder vases that I, I painted the inside pink and then I put the water slide on the outside and then used a glitter spray on it. Came out really well. Here's another charm that I made. And again, because it's going to hang on my Alice in Wonderland journal, it's going to hang on a journal. It's going to get really a lot of force applied to it. So I wanted to have something that was really going to hold up. And so I just put a water slide decal on both sides. These are called clock dials. And you can see how big of a sheet that is. So I'm going to play around and I'm going to show you really quickly how to do a water slide on one of these. Now, clearly, the, the color will show through. As you can see here, I used really light colors for these. And this is white. Um, it works better on the not pre-washed because it's nice and smooth. I did iron this um, beforehand just to make sure I had a good seal. Now, let's play around. Now, what about dyes you want to use? Um, I use steel rule dies on some of these. This is a regular die. You want to have a good amount of pressure. This is hand cut, but steel rule, rule dies are great because they can cut through really thick material. I have used regular dies on Craft Text all along without any problem. Adding the um, 
adding this and then adding a couple coats of the Duralar Ultra Matte Polyurethane, uh, it kind of makes it a little thicker. And so sometimes it might take a little extra effort to do your die cutting. You might want to use your electronic die cutting machine like the um, Sizzix Switch is what I use. You could use something like this, which is a sidekick die from Elizabeth Craft to make a journal cover or a journal insert page. You can use one without the tab and that would definitely give you a good, um, a good journal frame or a journal cover. So there's different options, pockets and things you could use. So many different possibilities. You could just cut hand cut that into a rectangle, make it into a journal cover. I'm going to use this, which is a Biggs die called Tattered Butterfly, and I am going to run that through. Here you have that. The nice thing about the steel rule is, as I said, you can do all sorts of cutting through different materials. Now these can pop out or stay put, whatever you want. I'm going to pop them out. Isn't that pretty? You could also distress your edges. Okay, so now we have two butterflies. We could layer them, and I think that's going to be really, really pretty. And then we could put, like, gems down the middle for his body. So, again, I do use the Dura uh, Clear Ultra Matte to go ahead and seal these up before I do any die cutting. I have just one coat on there. So there's an option there, but let's just grab a fresh sheet and play around so I can show you. So here's some pieces. I'm not sure exactly which set this came from, but let's use this one right here. And it's the same set that I used for this right here. You can recognize. Okay, so your first goal is to trim these as close you can to the image. You can cut off any of the image you don't want. Like if I don't want any of those little balls there, I can cut those off. You want to get it fairly close. It's got a clear protective carrier sheet on it. So this is the unprewashed. I straighten this up. Make sure you use a good safety ruler like this one to protect your hand. Okay, so we have that cut. I just go ahead and do this, and I really push down with one of those. A silicone mat here under my work. I'm going to put this on the cover. Now what I need is some water. I could use a cup and a brush. I could use one of the water brushes like this. It's a small image, so that would be fine. You want to handle the design as little as possible. There is a clear protective coat on the top. You want to peel that off, but try not to handle the design. You can see I'm holding the sides. I'm going to lay this flat, center my design. It's a little sticky. Put that down and smooth it out from the center out. And then all we need to do is get it wet. Now in getting it wet, you're going to see that is the image start to come through. You see that, how you can see that coming through there. And it's not gonna uh, take really as too much water, but also it does take a while really to soak through though. So if that makes sense, you can't slide it off immediately squeezing my brush to get that ready. So I'm giving this a chance to really coat that and get all of the edges. Make sure you get all the way against the edges. So if you have a little clear border around your design, you're going to want to make sure you get the water in those areas as well. Okay, let this set just a moment here. Turn that around. It's so pretty. You can already see what it looks like. If you're having a hard time with some of the sentiment of these decals or water slides because you can't read them because they look backward, hold them up to the light and turn them around and you'll be able to see. Okay, we're going to check and see. Yeah, we just gently push down and slide it off. On a really big design, it takes a lot more effort to slide that off. So be patient that you don't tear that. And there you have a nice little journal cover right there. You could trim your edges. You could distress the edges. 
So once this dries, which doesn't take long at all, um, I, again, give it a couple coats of this. I would cover the whole thing, not just the image. One of the things that I know I want to do is to get my corners rounded. And this is one of the great benefits of having the Cropodel Corner Chomper. People say all the time that it's awfully expensive for a corner rounder. It is so much more than a corner rounder because you can cut through thick materials such as this, which is your, um, your craft text. Now, I was saying craft text, you know, you can get marks. This is washable. You can take, um, like I even use a pre-spay for my laundry detergent, and then I will get that pencil mark off and then rinse it. But I'm not going to do that until I get this nice and set. Okay, we're going to fan this off, dry it, and then I will show pictures at the end, close-up pictures of all these projects, and I'm going to finish my butterfly off camera as well. So I'm really happy with all of these uh, little doodads I've been making. And I think that this is going to be something really fun to be able to add to my repertoire of how I use craft text products. So check out the links down below and please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for loads of more content and tutorials.